This is the story of a man who never belonged anywhere, whose backyard is the world, whose ways of life are the dreams of escape for those who want action but never find it. The man, John Steele, adventurer. What makes a sportsman? Is it the urge to kill, to kill big game, the biggest animal, the biggest fish, the urge to show off, to hang stuffed heads on the wall? Or is it the oldest way men know how to prove their courage? What makes a sportsman? Join me on a hunt and find out. A different kind of hunt I'll never forget. Not only because we almost didn't get back alive, but because of the things I learned, learned all over again. What makes a sportsman is what makes the man. So many things we know. Elementary truths that life drums into our skulls. Why do we keep forgetting? Why do we blunder through life like a wounded animal in a jungle thicket, blundering wild and blind with the hunter at his heels, the hunter with the gun, the almighty power of death? Why was I here? Why did I hire out to take them here, here to Burma, these two guys, Francis Leroy and Noah Baxter, guys who couldn't see eye to eye? I should have known better. I should have known enough to have turned them down, them both down, their green backs and their green disposition. No, I shoot as I wish. I don't hunt to kill. I shoot with the camera. Oh, shut up, Leroy. Hey, Steel. Yeah, Mr. Baxter. Steel, where's my liquor? I thought I paid you for a hunting expedition. Cameras, film. What's the idea of letting him come along? Hunt, huh, kill, you mean. All you want to do is kill. Oh, shut up. You ought to be back home snapping baby. Just Steel. a second, you two. Come on, come on, Steel. Your guide. Guide, ain't your guide? Well, guide me to my bourbon. You packed all this camp and gear. Let me think, huh? Let me remember. Mr. Steele. Oh, shut up, Len. Mr. Steele. Never mind, Mr. Kodak. Where's my mash with Really, you? Mr. Steele, the way you've packed all these hemicrolls, I can't find my light meter. Light meter? What's the matter with your eyes? Aim a gun with eyes. Any jerk ought to be able to aim a camera. I wasn't talking to you, Mr. Baxter. Yeah, good idea. A liquor steel, uh, where'd you put out? Yeah, it? yeah, I remember where I packed it now, just a second. Really, Mr. Baxter, if you and you I... You and me, along... Buster, in the same league. If we're going to get along on this... Forget thing... it, we ain't going to get along. Hunting trips are for a man with a gun. Now, you just keep out of rifle range, or you're liable to get a 470 Express through the box of your camera. I found your bottle, Baxter. <laughs> bottle? I gave you a case to pack back in Mandalay. You're not home, mister, and you're not in Mandalay. One bottle. All we could comfortably carry. Now, what about your light meter, Mr. Leroy? Well, I can't find it. One bottle. What? You'll find all your camera supplies in that knapsack. Aren't you going to engage us porters? No porters. Monsoon season. One bottle. Bah. Well, you mean to say that we'll each here. have to pack Cherry, carry our own? Each his own. But you're supposed to have porters on jungle expeditions. Why, I have all this photographic equipment. Monsoon, rainy season. Can't hire natives. They farm. So you know how hot it is? Want to call it quits? No. It'll get hotter. I'm after tigers. Leroy? Well, we haven't even begun. Giving you both your chance now before we get into the hills. Oh, I've got to get those shots of the green pigeon. Come on, pick up your packs. Let's get started. Shots. Camera shots, Mr. Baxter. I don't kill. <laughs> pigeon. That's right, pigeon. <laughs> started. Noah Baxter, Leroy, and me. I took the lead. We started up into the lush, hilly bush. Burma bush. Not the humming green madness you find to the east in Indochina or northwest in Assam. Even in monsoon, Burma is different. Quiet. Except for the birds. The sound of birds. Quiet and tangled. Tangled with trees and thick creeper vines. Tangled so thick you don't see wild game until it's right on top of you. Tigers, leopards, wild elephant, and men. Sometimes only yards apart, ignorant of each other when the wind is right. All moving side by side. And the trees, the teak, teak trees all around, climbing up out of the tangle. Trees centuries high. 
Hey, Steele. Get back. You're on the trail. Steele. You two, Leroy, together. You two guys are going to keep together behind me now. Well, I saw stuff moving over on the Don't side. Don't go wandering off. Just looking for a shot. I'm sorry, Mr. Steele. I did see a chance to snap some rare butterflies. Now, look, both of you. You're going to preach at me again. I'm sorry, Mr. Steele. Sorry, sorry. Are you two going to start that again? You expect me to march along with this camera bottle? Oh, hoodlum. Every time I see a chance to shoot, he starts clicking them cameras. You'll get your fill of hunting. Hunting? Killing? You mean hoodlum with a gun? Okay. Oh, no, no. Here's your money. No, no, come on. Come on, Steve. Please, Mr. Steele, don't resign. I'll put the door away, I huh? must get my pictures of the green now, pigeon. Forget it. Yeah, have a drink, Steve. Come on, come on. Uh, sure, don't get sore. Yeah, I'm sore. I'm rubbed raw with you guys. Uh, put that bottle uh, away. Okay, sure. I I'll stick behind you on the trail. I'll even stick behind you, Leroy. <laughs> We started off again, but they didn't. They didn't stick behind me, and the brush kept getting heavier. Every time I turned my back on them to study the game trail ahead, I could hear them fly apart, crashing off into separate directions behind me. Baxter! Yes, sir, yes. Come on! I'm coming, Mr. Steele. Oh, I'm coming. Come on, they're on the way, too. Oh, do it right now. The country kept getting rougher. Overhead, up through the curtain of trees, I could see the sky darkening. Thunderhead, bringing up the humidity. The air kept getting thinner, tense and charged. Tense, as if it was being stretched. As if it was made of rubber until the monsoon storm broke, and I knew it would snap apart into rain. I felt tense inside, too. And I knew it wasn't only electricity in the air. Them. It was them, these two, these two men. Lightning hit high up in the trees, and I thought about electricity. Like charges repel. Unlike charges attract. They didn't look alike. One with a gun, the other with a camera. They didn't look alike. They looked different. But they were both hunters. Like charges repel. Lightning kept hitting closer, and I made them run for the cover of a clearing away from the trees. Okay, okay. Will it rain? But my camera is... I mustn't get my equipment too wet. The clearing. Stay close. Get the doctor. Don't get lost. Follow me now. Come on. Rain. Make the clearing. Another minute, we won't be able to see. Come on, you... made the air liquid. It was getting darker and I couldn't see. Oh, Leroy! Baxter! Where, what happened? Oh, a shot. I ran for the sound of the gun. The rain turned out and I broke through a tangle of creeper vines. Down below was a jungle creek. A cow buffalo was threatening Leroy with its horns. Baxter was getting set to shoot again. A tame cow, water buffalo with a little baby calf. Baxter must have missed his first shot. Still! Stand still, Leroy! Baxter! Don't shoot! Stand still, Leroy! This time I knock him down, sure! Don't shoot, you fool! Help me, Mr. Steele! Steele! Tame! A farmer's buffalo! Don't shoot, Baxter! I'm coming down! Stay away! Keep away, Steele! I'm getting him! This is what I come for! Hit it on the snout! It's tame! It won't hurt you! Don't... <laughs> The beginning of danger and the peace of the unknown. There's much of these when in a moment we hear more in the story of John Steele, adventurer. I warned him. I warned Baxter, but he took careful aim and squeezed the trigger. When I slid down the bank into the jungle river, Baxter was lying on his back, half in the water, a dumb look on his face. Leroy was gone, so was the buffalo, but the little buffalo calf was dead. A vulture flapped down onto a low tree branch. I went past Baxter. I went through the water and brushed away the green jungle slime on the surface of the river. The little calf had been shot through the heart. I lifted it by the tail to pull it out of the water. It was too heavy. I let it go. The tail sank down again into the water. I watched the green, slimy waters turn red. Say, give me a... Get up yourself. I can't. I... Get up. Oh, oh, oh. Easy. Hey, where's my rifle? 
left shoulder. Yeah. Thought you knew how to use a heavy express. Oh, uh, my hip bottle. Look, I cut my... Well, you did it. I broke my bottle and cut the hip. You sure did it up fine. Hey, just, just get hold of my arm. I give it a pull. Oh. <laughs> I guess you're right. Cut ain't so bad, but the rifle surely kinked my shoulder. Kickback. That's not only kickback. Leroy! That jerk. Leroy, come out here. Camera snapping jerk. If it wasn't for I him, it would have... Seal. Come down out of that tree. Oh. Did you say that animal was tame, Mr. Steele? It wasn't for you, Lenslaus. You and your click, click, and camera. Well, I didn't ask you to shoot. Screaming and yelling like a little child. If it wasn't for you, I'd have had a real fine trophy. And Steele, you see him? You see that animal's head of horn? I saw them pretty birds, and I wanted to keep up with you, Mr. Steele, but I thought, well, the rain... Man, I can see them horns right now over my fireplace. Three feet wide. I thought if I got under a tree, it would only take a second. You wouldn't mind. Three feet if there was an inch. I just wanted to get a quick picture of the birds. They were all excited by the storm. And, well, I didn't think you'd mind. What's the matter, Steele? Well, I, uh, I... I didn't see the animal. He was standing under the tree, too, with the little one, the cat. What's the matter, huh? Well, it chased me. It really did. And you know, I don't have a gun to chase me down here to the river. But was it really tame, Mr. Steely? It looked so big. Yeah, yeah, Leroy, it looked. Where's the little calf? Come on. Let's get out of here. Say, uh, you sure you only packed me that one bottle? If it really was tame, why did you chase me, Mr. Steele? Come on, before the car comes back. I really want to get those pictures. Well, and sure, a few better now. I'm always into that one, the green pigeon. Cut on my hips, not so bad. <laughs> Flesh cut. Very oh. rare, you know. Did you know it's very rare, Mr. Steele, the green pigeon? I sure missed that bottle. And then there's the whitey grit. Whitey grit's very rare, too. Uh, pictures, uh, I mean. All that pedigree, Kentucky mash. Down on the bottom of a stinking river. Like the baby. Oh, yeah. You mean that calf, huh? Oh, wait. Not so fast, Mr. Steele. Don't leave so fast. Yeah, sure it's still not so hot. I sure wish I still had that bottle. I wish I could keep up with you. Oh, oh boy, if I had that bottle, things would be different. I wouldn't feel like that. Babble. Nickel and dime talk, babbling like nothing had happened. Babbling in the middle of the suddenly quiet jungle. I couldn't talk. I couldn't answer them. All I could do was lead them, do what they'd paid me to do. I was afraid to talk. I was afraid to let go. I felt like I was screaming inside. I was afraid if I said another word, the screaming would break out of me and I'd have my knife against their throats and I wouldn't know how to hold myself back. The sky was darkening again. Lightning was stabbing far off over the trees, still too far away to hear the thunder. I kept listening for grunts, and I kept watching the grass and the ground. I was following something they didn't know, they didn't see. They had eyes to work gun sights and range finders, but they didn't see the watery splotches of blood dying the jungle grass, blood from a wounded cow who'd never forget her calf. They didn't know when you wound a buffalo, you have two choices, stalk it or it stalks you. Just a tame cow buffalo. Yeah. Tame, yeah, sure, with a wound. Well, I didn't know. With his calf shot down before his eyes? Bullet must have gone through the mother. Hit the calf between the eyes. Huh? A 470 will go through steel. Well, I didn't know. I thought... Well, I thought him scream, and I thought she was wild. I... I've heard all about wild buffalo. Wild now, all right. Come on, looks like it's safe for a while. Safe as it's gonna be. They knew, but they only knew part. I was afraid to tell them the whole truth. Afraid like I saw them getting more and more afraid as the sky darkened again and monsoon lightning started shaving the tops off distant trees. Afraid, not like cowards. Afraid like I was afraid. Because we were only men in a savage wilderness with its own laws. Laws that go back millions of years before there were any men. One of us had touched the trigger that works that law. Kill or be killed. Mr. Steele. Down, keep your voice down. I see it. The river. Where the calf was killed? We're going around. Circling? What's the idea, Steele? Okay, I didn't want to tell you. Yeah, we've been circling. I was only trying to trail the wounded buffalo. Only now it's tailing us. What? Don't move. Don't move, I say. Trailing us? All the time? They'll do that. What's it mean? Get her before she gets us. She'll kill us. 
I didn't really come here for buffalo. You're here now. I want to shoot a tiger. I want to get another chance at those birds. Stop moving. Keep your voices down. It's going away. It's a storm. A trick. To lead us after into those thorn thickets. I don't see it. If you do this close, you'll never live to remember it. You mean to say a big dumb animal over like say that? Say what? It's cunning enough to lead us into a tent? Most cunning thing in the bush, next to an elephant. I read that. Only elephant can't see like buffalo. I read that too. Hunting magazines. Elephants will run from a man. Wounded buffalo never. He'll never give up. Maybe you read that. No, I never read that. I guess I, I started something. Come on, wind shifting. Yeah, mister. With the sky the way it is, I guess you sure did. The sky. The sky was getting lower, lower and lower. Until ugly green-black clouds came down like rotten shrouds and capped the tops of the trees. And out of the clouds, the lightning, stabbing down and charging the heavy wet air. Charging the earth, charging us. So you could feel the hair rise on your arms and the back of your neck and it was hard to breathe. The air was electric and I thought of electricity again. Baxter and Leroy, they were together now. Maybe they really were alike deep down. The gun and the camera and the men, different skills, but maybe it all winds up that way anyway. Killed or be killed. Dark. It's getting darker. I don't like it. So still. So still, Mr. Steele. Yeah, yeah, still. Just be quiet. Never this still. Nothing's moving. Not even the leaves. Strange. I feel... I feel like everything's waiting. Yeah, yeah, sure, waiting. I'm waiting for a chance to get in some real hunting. You are, huh? Yeah. What do you think I spent all that money for? Even a pitcher snapper here. Ain't you waiting for a chance with them green pigeons? Oh, yes, I've come a long way, Mr. Baxter. Green pigeons. Of course, I will settle for the white egret. Sure. Uh, yeah, get, getting darker all the time. You hardly see the trees. You know, this is very upsetting, Steele. Coming out here to hunt and finding out it's you being hunted. <laughs> Suspense and action. One leads to the other. The result we'll hear in just a moment with the climax of another adventure with John Steele. We couldn't see. The dark thunderheads came down so low they seemed to press down the hundred-foot tops of the teak trees. And it felt like the ground was reaching up to touch, too. Low pressure. The air pressure was dropping, and low pressure was sucking up every stink and smell from the jungle all around us. And our smell, too. Sucking it up and sending it out into the humid air. Sending it out to the keen nostrils of the waiting buffalo. The heavy mist began rising up out of the ground. The leaves began to curl up, too. Rain. Any minute, Rain. Rain would make it even harder to see. Back home, I'd Back sure home. you. Know, Back home, I ain't used Mr. to this. Steel. I ain't used to waiting. Mr. Steel, can't we go? Wait and get your old age. I insist we go. Now, look, old age here. Waiting didn't make me what I am. It didn't, huh? I insist we leave. No, it didn't, Buster. And I'm not sitting around here taking orders from you. You'll take orders as long as I'm in charge. Now, get down. Mr. Steel. Charge. Back home in my business, you're being charged at a washroom. Down. Hand oh, I said, please, down. Mr. Steele. Charge at a washroom. I don't room. like it here. The atmosphere. Yeah, the washroom. A bop in your hand, charge of me. Some case, huh? Some other time, pal, some other place, I'm going to make you eat that. Uh, please, now, please don't fight. Uh, Fighting will get us nowhere. What do you think I am? A two-bit jerk? You think I take orders, take orders from the like to you? I give the orders. I got 200 people working for me, Buster. I got a building. My own building, see? I got a railroad side and freight comes rolling right into my building. That's what the railroad company thinks of me. Please, Mr. Baxter, you're getting very loud. Oh, sure I'm loud. I'll tell the world. What do you think I'm like you, you little lens louse, going around cheap, cheap, cheap on your toes for snapshots of a bird? Don't you call me that name again. Uh, I'll have you know that I'm in charge of pictorial laughs at my college. I have individuals under me, too, Mr. Baxter. Sure, just, I established the curriculum. You're not even in charge of yourself. Let him alone. Oh, I know his type. I can stand up to him. Me, me out here hiding in a bush. Cops and robbers with an animal. He's telling me. Get back here. Him telling me. John Steele, guide. Back, I said. Get down. Guide. Really, Mr. Steele, I feel very uncomfortable telling here. Me. Very uncomfortable. I, I'm beginning to doubt if I really want those pictures of the green pigeon or the white egret. Pictures? Yes, I, I doubt if I really do. How long we got to hide? Keep yelling, you'll invite a charge. 
I've listened to all I'm going out of both of you. I want to go. Stay down. I don't like it. I want to go. I'd rather go too, Mr. Steele. You're going to stay down, both of you. I can't stand it. You start it. I'll go get it. You will. I got a gun. I know how to use it. Like you used it before. Mr. Steele's really... You stay out of this. It's my life, too. I don't have a gun. Okay, you got one. No. You talk so much here. My rifle. I don't use a gun. No, no, you don't. You wouldn't know how, would you? Like you, I suppose, like you. Uh, You're a hoodlum, a killer. Steele's right. You got us into this. You're the big hero. All right, you and your talk about hunting, sports. Shut up. Go ahead. You like to shoot to kill? Get us out. I don't want to die here. Get down, both of you. No. I'm sick to the ears of listening to you. Let go. Get down. I warned you that buffalo's trailer. Let me go. Let go, I can't. she's waiting around. I'm somewhere waiting. Then go ahead. Go ahead, Baxter. Yeah. There's the woods. Go ahead. Use your gun. We're all sick of waiting for something we can't see. Just me, huh? All right, me too. I'm not afraid. You got the gun. I'll depend on you. Steel? You? There's a difference between being afraid and committing suicide. You realize we're going into this blind. Yeah, yeah. She's waiting and we don't know where. This poor trail circles and maybe a minute or maybe a week. She's only hurt bad enough to turn wild. Yeah, yeah, we know all that. I'm a hunter. I'm no sitting duck. I say go get her. She's so set on getting us. All right, let's go. <laughs> Ten hours we went by the radium hand of my watch. We went through the dark, Baxter, Leroy, and me, like crazy men, through the tangled creepers and the thorn thickets. And every minute, every foot we went, we waited for the close-range charge that gave you just one chance to shoot or the certainty of death. Quiet. Terrible. So still. Why is it so quiet? Always so noisy. Keep your voice down. Like a tomb. The jungle knows. Uh, Everything in the jungle is waiting, too. I hear it. Closer. Over there. No. no, quiet. No, there. I say that thicket. Those the ones there. Oh, shut up. You can't match eyesight with her eyes, ears, or nose. Now keep shut. How about them fancy range finders on your cameras, Leroy? You've got gun sights. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's quiet again. This is it. She's going to charge? She's standing still somewhere close. They can stand like statues. Huh. In cover, they'll stand like that. Stand and wait. She's waiting. She's got us nailed down by our smell. If we don't know where she is in this thick bush... Wants us to stumble onto her. Smoke her out. Yes, Mr. Seal. Like with Cougar, back home rocks. I'll throw rocks. Where are you getting rocks? Like the dirt branches. I'll throw all around. She won't move. I can't say it. Neither can I. We gotta smoke her out. <coughs> huh? Look. Something white. That's it. Like a ghost. <coughs> Put down that camera. The white grit. See there? On the phone book? Put it down. White grits travel with buffalo. Grab them back. No, there. I won't use flesh. I'll just... Gun, gun back there, it's her. The camera, the camera, click. Gun, shoot, this is that camera, click, smoke around. That's the Roy, got him with the horn. Back, get back for a clear shot. I hit it. You hit the boss, the bony part between the horns. Shoot for the shoulder, the boy. He got away. Leroy. Shot twice, I shot her twice and she got away. Leroy. Come on, look at the blood. Oh, She's losing oh, blood with the back of oh, Come on. Oh, I'll finish her. I'm not going to go through this again. Baxter, wait. Leroy's hurt. Come back here. The buffalo's not finished. Come back here. A man bleeding and another one running crazy blind through the dark, running after a 2,000-pound wounded animal with horns that start thick as your arm and end up in a pair of needle points. I stayed with Leroy. I had to. It's... It's... Yeah. Hurts, I know. Well, I... You lay still and I get a chance to turn again. My left shoulder, isn't it? No, you're right. Funny, feels like on my left. I swing my camera on my left, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, uh, got your cameras, too. Smash my camera? No, no, stay down. Both my cameras? Expensive, yeah, I know. Here, roll over them. No, not the money, my pictures. Smashed one camera. Other one, I think, just fell. Which camera? No. Roll. Oh, that's it. Which one did it smash? The one you were using. My picture? Uh-huh. The white egret? Should have warned you. Egrets fly with buffalo. My picture? Climb on their backs. Pick off bugs and take One of a kind. Now it's gone. Maybe you'll get another chance sometime. You still got a chance. No, no, not like that. Hey! Baxter, you all right? Hey, Lenspo! Come on! He's hurt. You saw the buffalo get him. What's he want, Steele? Come on, I got the buffalo. She's dead. Those shots did it. Huh? Says he got the buffalo. She ran till she died. Guess loss of blood. Come on, you so eager. Shoot me, stand right on top of her. <laughs> Come on, me, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Come on, come on. Take my face. 
Baxter. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Baxter. Sometime. Maybe sometime he'll take your picture. This is John Steele saying adventure is like pepper. Hot or mild, it adds flavor, zest, and tang to any life. Use it sparingly, but use it often.